Welcome to Vlogmas Day 6 <coughs> with me, Laura Penrose. <laughs> I am feeling better than I sound. <laughs> I thought I'd like actually be alright on camera but yeah I'm definitely a bit ropey but I'm nowhere near as bad as I thought I would be which I'm really grateful for. Um, I am going micless on purpose because I think the sound might be okay without my external microphone and I've noticed in my edit when I use my external microphone I actually have to lower the volume of my talking quite a lot otherwise it distorts so I'm going without the mic if you can hear like the ticking of the workings of my camera just let me know and I'll go back to normal microphone um, I also can't find my fluffy guy that goes on the top so hopefully that's okay but it is Wednesday morning Kids are at school, I've been to the bakery, I've got a coffee, I've got therapy in half an hour, so I just thought I would have a little chat, a little catch up with you. I've got my hot water bottle because I don't want to use up any oil unless I can help it by having the heating on, so I will heat myself rather than the house. Our village runs on oil, by the way, rather than gas, fun fact. <laughs> Um, and speaking of hot water bottles, something really exciting happened yesterday. Guess who's on the front page of Ravelry? That's right, Ravelry.com. Bing! Maxine hot water bottle cover. It's been featured. They do like a, they have like a main thing and then they have a couple of like other um, designs just kind of going with a theme. And obviously like it's winter and it's all about getting cosy and... The Maxine hot water bottles there and one of my lovely Chester's images has been used and I'm just so happy for the both of us. It, it really does make a difference. This happened a while ago with the Chantilly cardigan. The Chantilly patterns are one of my lowest performing patterns, which I totally understand. They're quite a Marmite design. But the cardigan was featured on the front page of Ravelry and it, it made a difference to sales. It really, really did. And I've already seen a little boost for the old hot water bottle and again it's quite a niche product because Americans generally apparently don't really use hot water bottles um my sister says it's because most Americans don't have like electric kettles like we have some people have like stovetop kettles or they have like you know most Americans have like a coffee pot so they don't need to boil a kettle they're not big tea drinkers or they microwave their tea let me know if you're in America is this a very strange concept to you because where I'm from it's like it's just the best thing in the world. So yeah, it's lovely to have a little boost to a pattern. And in general, actually, I did want to say a little thank you because the it, it's been a good month, I'm gonna say. Now, we're celebrating our wins and we're not being all modest, modest and quiet about it. It's been a really good month and it's mainly been sweet shop blankets and Stella cushions and hot water bottle covers because obviously everyone's doing their advent knitting. So I just wanted to say, if you are, knitting one of my designs in December thank you like it makes me feel really good and I'm really grateful especially because there are so many like wonderful advent patterns out there um I feel honored that you've chosen mine so before we get too gushy shall we move on <laughs> so yeah I'm actually feeling okay I'm definitely tired and achy but I'm in a very, very fortunate position where I can spend the day sitting on the sofa if I need to. I have got some work to do and I've been doing emails and stuff. I did some work yesterday and I've got like quite, I've got two good chunky bits of work to do. One is a translation and one is a secret pattern that I'm not going to share until it's released. And I'm not sure when it's going to be released. I think it's probably going to be New Year or my birthday because trying to get it out in December, 
not a good idea. <laughs> um, so yeah, but the translation is exciting. I haven't done any pattern translating. Basically this year I couldn't handle the admin of it, but I was approached by a lovely French translator who offered her services, professional translator. I get offers from people all the time to translate my patterns for free, which is really, really kind, but I will only ever work with a professional editor because I can't check your work. <laughs> so it, I need to know that it's of a professional standard and I've got someone I can hold accountable to. But yeah, they messaged me and I said, yes, please, let's give it a go. So we're, tra we're currently in the process of translating the sweet shop into French. It's my most successful pattern, so it would make the most sense, but I am. One of my goals for 2024, admin-wise, is to do more pattern translation. I'm gonna, um, I'm not sure which languages I'm gonna do yet. I need to do a little bit of research. Probably gonna do like a Scandinavian language or two, some more European ones. I don't really know. But that is definitely on the cards, along with a rebrand. Very exciting. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to work on either the translation today or my other pattern. Probably the translation, because she's waiting for me to do it so that she can sign it off and I can pay her. So I should probably do that first. Um, and th so that'll be nice. I really like a little bit of... I really like an admin day now. Who the heck am I? How have I got to this point? I like an admin day, but... Why wouldn't you like an admin day when it involves sitting on the sofa with a pastry from the bakery and a hot water bottle? I'm aware of my privilege right now. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be a really cosy, quiet day at home. I'm very grateful to pass Laura for tidying the kitchen last night. It is a mess again now, to be fair, but <laughs> it's nowhere near as bad as it would have been. And I just need to put the washing up away and do a quick tidy round. And the living room's tidy and the bedroom's nice and... Oh progress <laughs> so i am going to shall i show you my shawl because i did quite a bit of shawl knitting last night and i think you can see the 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 change now and my husband agrees he can see it but i'm not sure how well it's going to translate on camera especially in this very bright lighting this morning my goodness it's like the um the the universe knew that I was feeling a bit rubbish and delivered me the coziest of all weathers. Fog is one of my favourites. I love snow. I don't like being in the snow. So that just takes it just below fog for me because it gives the same kind of cosy vibe but without having to deal with actual snow. So thank you, universe, for the maximum cosy vibes today. But anyway, sure. So let, I'm going to hold it a bit further back because I think there you can see it better. Maybe, maybe not. You can definitely see it in real life. And um, yeah, it's definitely getting darker now. And we've gone rogue. I got a message from Georgie of the Fibre Fox yesterday saying she'd just been watching my vlogmas and she had some advice for me for my shawl. I was like, oh, please don't think I'm not enjoying the advent because I really, really am. I really hope she doesn't think I was being critical in any way at all. I wasn't, I promise. Um, there you go. There's me and the inside of my brain taking over. You know, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We're good. Um, but she advised that I change to single colour brioche. And I think she's right. I can already see that the fade is getting much more dramatic now. And we're going to end up with like two different sides of the shawls. And I think because you're effectively fading every other colour with this thing, it's going to not be as fady, I don't think. So last night I started the process of transitioning down to one colour and to do that I've got so I've got my front and my back colour for there are there are basically four rows per repeat and you like have a colour on the front and a colour on the back and so I, I swapped which colour was front and back like on alternate rows so row one and two were one colour and then row three and four were another colour and I would swap so I basically fading to swap the colours so that the darker colour is on the front of the shawl and then I'm going to fade out the lighter colour for the next colour and then fade out so right okay <laughs> so for example I've currently got I'm currently fading three and four and I'm swapping three and four so that four is the prominent colour and then I'm going to fade three into five and then I'm going to fade out four completely so we've only got five and we are officially in single colour. And moving forward, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, am I on to something here? Is fading between the two colours 
gonna look really good if I'm fading using two color brioche and striping? Is that gonna blur the lines even more? Is it gonna give an even more gentler fade? So I think what I might do when I go into the next color and the next color is do like a, a set of two color brioche and then a stripe and then into that full color. How exciting is this? And at some point we're gonna be changing to garter stitch. I don't know how far we go in the brioche until we get to the garter, but I'm enjoying the brioche so much I might just keep going till I get bored. So I did show you briefly on the on the little B-roll um, the new colour, but I wanted to show you them compared to the next colour. So this is number five. Oh my goodness, this lighting isn't great, is it? This is number five and this is number six, and you can really see. There's a clear difference there. It's getting much darker and in comparison to the shawl, it's so much yellower. So I'm really, really, really excited. And this is all I wanna work on, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, I'm still, I did some more um, sock knitting whilst I was editing last night. And I think when I finished that black sock, I'm gonna move on to a gift knit because I've got two pairs of mittens to make, but I can make a pair of mittens in, in a day if I've got a lot of time sitting at home or at least, two days maximum at least two days maximum that was very bad grammar wasn't it so that's where we are i <laughs> spent some time last night when i couldn't sleep looking through your responses to the forms the q a and the um christmas opinions and oh my goodness <laughs> you guys have roasted christmas you are so funny. I have such a giggle reading through your unpopular Christmas opinions and I cannot wait to share them with you. Honestly, I've gone from trying to make a bit of fluff filler content to it being, I think it's gonna be one of my best videos. I'm so excited to make it for you. It's gonna be so funny. I was thinking on Saturday, I've got a really busy day. I've got to take, I've got to get the house ready. I've got to take the kids to a party and then all afternoon and evening, all afternoon tea time, we've got friends visiting and then it's gonna be evening and I'm going to be pooped so I think I'm not going to vlog on Saturday just because it's going to be a really really busy day and also when I'm spending time with my friends I want to really focus on that and not be thinking about getting shots and stuff oh I've got 10 minutes till therapy have I been talking for 20 minutes hopefully not no 12 minutes <laughs> um so I'm going to take the day off vlogging on Saturday and so I am gonna post the unpopular knitting opinions on Saturday and I'm probably going to film it tomorrow because Thursday is my long day. The kids are in after school club so I get two extra hours on my day. So I'm going to use those two extra hours to film that video. So I'll put the form below this video again. Make sure you get your unpopular knitting opinions in. The Q&A will probably come a little bit later maybe. I've got another busy day. When's my next busy day? I'm not sure when my next busy day is. We'll see, but yeah, Q&A will come as well. So thank you so much for all your responses. Honestly, they're brilliant. I can't wait. So I'm going to quickly eat my pastry, drink my coffee, and then I'm going to be ready for therapy. So I will catch up with you guys in a little while. I hope you're having a lovely day. Christmas mugs. Is that going to focus? I mean, I've already shown it to you. Haven't yet sorted out my Christmas cupboard. Was going to, but couldn't be bothered. Good evening. Welcome to the evening segment. I'm in my pajamas. Not yet overwhelmed by my hair, but we're close. We're close. <laughs> and I thought I'd give you a little catch up. I ended up having a really slow afternoon. It really hit me this afternoon. I had a really tired spell, and I just. 
I tried really hard to pick up my computer and do some work, which I did. I did some emails, which is good, because staying on top of my emails is important. Um, but I didn't get any actual work done, but I just, I just couldn't get my brain to focus. So I lay on the sofa and watched Vlogmases whilst knitting on my shawl because I'm obsessed. I can't remember the last time I was this like sucked into a project that wasn't a design. Um, I just, I'm really enjoying it. I am now transitioned to colour number five and we're working only with colour five now. It's not gonna be, <laughs> pretty much looks the same all the way through, but in the daylight, you can really, really see the difference, how it's much lighter here and it goes through to warmer, yellower moments here. And I guess you can kind of see, but I've only just hit those much warmer colors. So over the next bit, we are gonna get warmer and yellower. And when I've been transitioning, I've been doing a mixture of two colour brioche and one colour brioche stripes and just kind of going with what felt right. And so far, at least to me, it's looking nice and smooth and gradual, which is wonderful. So I'm just gonna carry on doing what feels right, striping when it feels right, two colouring when it feels right, and just really relaxed to the project. I checked the pattern and I am two thirds of the way through the brioche increases. So I've got like about this much more to go increasing wise but obviously the rows are getting really really long now so I'm expecting a few more colours and then we change to garter and I'm not sure how I feel about that I kind of want to stay in brioche maybe I will stay in brioche a little bit longer who knows maybe I will brioche away until we're halfway through the advent calendar and then switch to garter for the second half I also need to have a look at the um the methods used for fading in garter. Obviously with garter you've got the like garter bumps which you can use to um, fade even more. So we'll see what the situation is with that. But yeah, this is all I wanna work on. It's just so comforting and so, I can't think of the words. And it's for me, it's just for me. For no other reason, then it's for me. It's not for work, it's not for a purpose, it's not because I think I need it, it's just because it's for me and I want it. And those projects are quite few and far between these days through choice and I'm all right with that. See, I love working on my designs and I do enjoy working for, uh, working, knitting for other people under the right circumstances, but it is really nice to just do something purely for me. Um, I had a really, really good therapy session today. It was really, really good. We are in a phase now that I have termed my closure phase. <laughs> now that I have like accepted or like named the issues, challenged the issues, worked on challenging the issues. Now I'm at a point where we're kind of going in, really going deep into the why. And that's a tricky bit because you have to look back at past events, you have to look trauma in the face, you have to assess your relationships with people in your life that you love and it's it's hard, but oh my goodness, the closure feels so, so good. Really, really good. And my uh, therapist hit me with quite possibly the best metaphor ever today and I really want to share it with you. I quite often talk in metaphor because I find it easier. I find it easier to explain how I'm feeling. If I can't find the actual words, I feel better using a metaphor. And it's something that was established quite early on in my um, therapy journey. <laughs> and we were, we were talking about how I used to feel so broken and segmented and like there was all these different parts of me and I was at battle with some of them and some of them felt like me and some of them didn't some were lost and some I didn't want and my therapist said to me Laura you are a ball of yarn and I went what she went you're a ball of yarn but you but you were tangled up you were always whole you were always one thing but you tangled yourself up. And what we've been doing over the past few months has been slowly untangling, reordering, 
and now you're winding that ball back up again into its whole piece. It was always whole, you were never broken, you were never falling apart, you were always one thing. And now you're, it, you've nearly finished winding it up and oh, it hit me so hard. <laughs> she is incredible, I was so lucky to find her, I can't even. But um, after our session, I was sat on the sofa just knitting and thinking about this metaphor and processing it and it developed even further in my mind and I've messaged her since to like let her know how it's developed. And for me, thinking about that ball of yarn, the ball of yarn on its own, in itself, is a thing of worth and value and beauty, just, just on its own. How many times have we bought beautiful scar uh, skeins with no idea what we're gonna do with them just because they're so wonderful on their own as a thing. You wouldn't even ever have to do anything with them. They're just lovely as they are. And that's me, that's you, that's a person. But under the right circumstances and with the right knowledge and with the right care and love and attention, that thing can become something even more wonderful. And it's still the original thing it was. It's just in a different form. And I can feel myself on the precipice of that. I've finally got myself back into the order I'm supposed to be in, me, myself. And I can, I'm now ready to, to transform that into something even more wonderful and um, yeah I was just been thinking about that all day and it's oh it makes me want to cry <laughs> I really wanted to share that with you guys because it's just I think it's a really nice way to think about yourself as a person and anyone could benefit from that especially you guys who are here for the yarn <laughs> but anyway I, I was also thinking a lot about productivity today I really I haven't been what some might call productive but I actually feel like I have been pretty productive, considering I feel like absolute S-H-I-T. <laughs> I have managed to take care of myself. I've managed to nourish myself. Future Laura here just popping in because I forgot to add that a few of you asked me about the pasta recipe. And my mum just asked me for the pasta recipe, which reminded me. I don't have a specific recipe that I follow, soz, but it's just something that I've honed over time. So I can give you like pointers and the best, my best pieces of advice. So I just put bacon or lardons or whatever in a pan and then I shred my Brussels sprouts up nice and thin and small so they cook quicker. And I just saute them together until they're softened. And then I add in the chestnuts and then I add in and then cook them up a little bit. And then I add garlic. And then I add in like a small glass of white wine and let that cook down very gently so that it kind of steams the sprouts a bit as well so that they're not, so that they're fully cooked. And then when the wine has reduced, I make sure the heat is low and then I add the cream and just let that very gently thicken. If you put the cream in when the pan's really, really hot, it'll split. So just, um, yeah, make sure your, your pan isn't too hot. And then I just kind of let that gently, slowly thicken and I season it, I cook the pasta, and then I put the wet pasta in. So it's still like got wet pasta water, starchy water on it to help thicken the sauce further. And that's it, a bit of Parmesan on the top. If you're a vegetarian, I would swap out the bacon for like dried porcini mushrooms to give that like umami and maybe some like smoked sea salt to kind of give that salty smoky flavour that I get from the bacon. And if you don't like chestnuts, don't add chestnuts. If you don't, you could do pine nuts, toasted pine nuts would be really nice. Um, and if you don't like cooking with white wine, I would just use stock instead. So there you go, there's your pasta recipe. Good night, see you tomorrow. I managed to empty the dishwasher and put a wash on. And tonight I'm gonna cook myself a healthy meal and those things, I managed to get the kids to and from school. I picked up my prescription that I've been putting off for days and days and days. <laughs> so actually though, I have not done that piece of work and sorted out the cupboard and done all the things. Oh, I ordered the kids Christmas presents as well. Two big ones that I've been, again, avoiding doing for some reason. It's a good job because one of them is nearly out of stock in most places. So yeah, I haven't done all those things I was set out, but actually, my day has still been really, really productive for many other reasons and taking care of myself and letting myself rest is the most productive thing I can do because I'm going to get better quicker and I'm going to be able to get to those tasks quicker. 
So just, just some thoughts for you today on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm gonna round this up here because I think you can hear my throat is getting a bit sore now. I've been drinking my nice Christmassy tea. I don't know if I'm gonna film tomorrow or not. We will see. Tomorrow's gonna be a maybe, maybe not day. I can't quite believe I've made it to day six without a break and I still feel fine. And if I wasn't feeling poorly physically, I would definitely be, film be filming again tomorrow, but I'm gonna see how I feel when I wake up. No pressure. This is a no pressure Christmas. This is a stress-free Christmas. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna round that up there. Don't forget to leave your unpopular Christmas opinions and your questions for me. I've been keeping an eye on the forms and I'm so excited to make that content for you. It's gonna be great. Uh, but I hope you are all feeling well and healthy. Thank you for joining me yet again for another Vlogmas episode. And I won't say I'll see you tomorrow. I will say I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me again. Good night.